Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and it's Brick Hall O'Clock and I don't have a label printer, you'll be very glad to hear. No, this is a box from Bricklink.com and this is a wonderful subscriber package. All right, well, I'm going to start with the most important one, which is the subscriber one. And I haven't had one of these for a while, so I'm very much looking forward to this. Uh, and if you want to send a package to the channel, you can, so the usual P.O. Box address. And I will open it with relish. So here we go. Ooh, I've got, golly, a huge <laughs> raft of paper. Oh, I think I've got some instructions, that's why. And oh my word, this looks very cool indeed. Right, so let me get rid of the box. I have a letter, some bricks, and what look like printed instructions for my very own <laughs> personalised brick heads. Look at that! Robin Hood Bricks brick head. <laughs> and that has got to be a printed brick. I saw that in there. That looks absolutely amazing. Oh, it must be that way up. Oh, wow! With a little bow and, oh, a quiver on the back. This is just too good. Let's read this letter, see who this is from. Hi Robin, we're writing to you for the second time. We continue to love and look forward to your videos. And as a thank you for continuing sharing your city, halls and undersea cabinet with us all, we wanted to send you a little gift. With the recent arrival of the 3D printed giant Robin. Yep, oh, let me reach him. He's just over here. <laughs> uh, what did I get to? Uh, and the growing gang of merry folk all back here. It struck us that it was an omission to the gang. Uh, which we decided to take action to remedy. Although I think you have mentioned uh, before that this isn't a theme that you're a massive fan of. No, not really, but you know, this one I am. <laughs> we hope this custom creation will possibly be the one exception. Uh, using Bricklink Studio for the first time, we have designed and created instructions for a Brickheads version Robin, and with the help of a couple of Bricklink orders, gathered the parts required. Finally, we decided it needed a finishing touch and ordered a custom printed tile for his grin to complete the model. And that looks absolutely stunning. There we go. Oh, and it's in a separate bag just so it doesn't get scratched. That looks great. And you could even have him looking a bit angry <laughs> if you did it the other way around. But that's great, isn't it? Uh, we hope you enjoy building and will feel this is an appropriate addition to your growing merry gang. Play well, Andy and Helen, aka Polar Bricks. Oh yes, I remember Polar Bricks. They sent me the Polar Bear that I still haven't used, but uh, I'm sort of saving it for my uh, art scene, just so you know. Haven't forgotten it. Uh, P.S. We'd thoroughly recommend giving Studio a try. I know you continue to use LDD as you're familiar with the software, but we found it was pretty easy to pick up and work with. With a continually updated parts database, you might find it better with less workarounds in the long run. What I do use... Um, Thank you very much, by the way, Andy and Helen. This is absolutely great. I'm going to stop the video in a minute and build this so we can have uh, the Brickheads Robin watching me open the other package. Uh, but on Studio, I do think Studio is great. Uh, and it has got more parts and it does sort of link with Bricklink better and uh, it gives you prices of parts and what colours aren't available and stuff. So it's definitely miles better. If you're starting out, you should definitely do Studio, uh, which is available for free on Bricklink uh, website. However, I'm just three times faster with LDD. So when I'm playing around trying to find parts, I kind of know where they all are. And it just makes me a much more creative builder. Kind of like I've got a really well organized uh, Lego parts room or something like that. So that's why I continue to use it. Eventually I have to go over, but usually I just find it really, really frustrating. Uh, even just uh, the controls, it's so instinctive to me. I'm lightning fast on LDD and not on studio. So just a personal sort of historical preference. I wish I'd started on studio in, in the first place and I'd have been uh, better off. Right, cool. This is incredibly thick. Uh, but I imagine it's quite uh, sort of simple steps if it's been done automatically, you know, one piece per time. So that'll make it nice and easy to, for me to build. Uh, so let's get going. Oh, I love the hat. You've done a really good design. Can't, uh, can't deny that looks absolutely awesome. So yeah, I'm going to get doing this. So yeah, back soon. And it's built, well, almost. Only the final piece to put on. I thought to do that live for the first time. And I've got to say, uh, Andy and Helen, this is super awesome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> the expression is just perfect. <laughs> 
That is brilliant. I really enjoyed building this, by the way. Uh, the belt and the sort of, uh, what would that be, bandolier type thing across there. And the little quiver on the back is a stroke of genius. I absolutely love it. It is really good. This is definitely becoming part of my desk setup uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed following your instructions, actually. They're, they're quite thick, but uh, necessary because these things are quite complicated. Uh, and it was just like buying an authentic set in a way because uh, I thought you'd missed out a bit at one point, but no, it was under another part and so on. <laughs> so, yeah, and I just love his little hand on the bow there. And the hat, I think, is a triumph. A combination of all sorts of different slopes and bits and bobs. Uh, this process, I imagine, was quite complicated for you. Designing something and then sourcing all the parts and then getting them all together just so you can build a lovely build. It's definitely worth it, but it's pretty much what I try and do twice a week. So now you've got a taste of uh, how much work goes into it. But wow, I adore him. Thank you so much for that. It means so much when somebody does something personal like this. Oh, very, very kind indeed. Uh, great investment in time. I'm going to move Big Rob in so I can try and get this uh, as part of my setup. Will it fit? It just fits. I'll probably be knocking this uh, red little uh, feather off all the time, but I'm happy to do that because he just looks so great, that expression. <laughs> he looks really cheeky, doesn't he? Which is exactly what I am. So yeah, that is really good. Oh, can I get that under there? There we go. That is perfect. Right. Well, thank you so much, Andy and Helen. I better get on with my uh, build, but um, or rather my box. But that is very much appreciated, and it will become part of my normal setup. You'll be very glad to hear, I'm sure. Uh, and if you guys want to make this, then uh, check out this parts list. You might have to figure out the rest or uh, get in touch, and maybe we can get the PDF for this uh, shared if people want to have one of these in their collection. But uh, yeah, there are all of the parts. Cool. Very cool indeed. Oh, wow. I, I feel like I need to stop now. But uh, no, I've still got a package to do. But that is great. I want to show Mrs. Hood. <laughs> so anyway, here is my label printer. Not. Let's get into this. Oh, I've sabotaged the box already to make it a bit hard, uh, easier to get into rather. And oh, it is a bit easier. Wow, there's lots of Lots of bits to fold out get rid of the paperwork and we'll have a brick avalanche there we go uh, now as you know i usually write uh, a few words down as to what is in this order uh, what made me go and buy it and partially i needed loads of uh, dark tan plates at the time so dark tan was half of the description and the other half was axle uh, so you might have to wait for that part to see what i meant by that you're probably already guessing if you like nexo nights Anyway, here's some of the dark tan. Uh, essentially, the level I've done on my deep sea cabinet is largely tan for the sand and so on. But later or further down, I'm going to do dark tan just to give it contrast and show a bit of shadow and depth. I mean, to be fair, it'll be an actual natural shadow, won't it? So it probably doesn't need it. Anyway, so whenever I'm seeing big uh, dark tan pieces, I'm buying them because I'm going to need loads of them to do two more levels. I uh, can't remember why I got those ones in dark bluish grey. Must have been for a reason, though. Don't imagine why I'd buy four 8 by 8 plates if I didn't need them. Uh, that is an old grey sort of wing piece that I thought would be good as part of a rocks. If you just put it right at the bottom of some burp pieces, then it just sort of gently brings you in from a sand layer into the rocks. That's what I'm planning to do on that. I think I bought these when I was going to... Um, improve on my old uh, jazz club sign when I was doing the three direction one uh, but then I moved to that 3d saxophone one uh, and that just shows the age of this order a little bit older than uh, uh, me doing that saxophone one because I don't need them anymore so I'm sure I can use them somewhere so that's that a oh, little cheeky chappy right uh, this looks like the bag with the axle in it and it's not a Technic Axle. Oh no, it's a Nexo Knights Axle. So, why on earth am I doing this? You're not collecting Nexo Knights, are you? Wow, he's bigger than I thought he'd be. <laughs> so, uh, this guy is much bigger than a normal minifigure. And I'm kind of curious as to how it actually works. Oh, this is all just one part. It's not a torso in an upper body part, or at least it might have been at some point, but I think it's kind of glued in now. Um, I wanted to see if I could use this giant knight 
as an actual knight in my uh, King's Castle scene whenever I get to that, uh, just to represent an incredibly large man, which is effectively what Axel is, the character in this. Uh, he came in three sets. Well, this particular version of him came in three sets, uh, including 70322, Axel's Tower Carrier from 2016, which I hadn't seen before. And it's pretty incredible, really, isn't it? <laughs> With a massive sort of dual disc firing turret type thing on the top of a six wheeled big vehicle. Uh, and the most important part of that set actually is near the front, uh, the little blue book of fear, which is the one I need desperately for my Nexo Knights book collection. Uh, there are none in the UK, would you believe? None whatsoever. <laughs> so I was considering an order to Europe, uh, but I just uh, just can't justify the cost just getting something like that and a few other pieces. I need to sort of build up a few more plans so I can get some more uh, urgently needed pieces in one go for efficiency. I also like the sort of, well, he's not a mech really, is he? He's more of a monster. Uh, the left there, Burnsy, I think he's called. He's very cool. Well, not literally. He's very hot, isn't he? But um, anyway, um, yeah, back to this guy. I thought this could be an incredibly large uh, uh, knight with the emblem of the uh, ox uh, in my scene. It's a bit annoying that we've got these sort of ta uh, trans neon shoulder pads. If we sort of ignore those for a minute, and if I put on some more sort of, uh, sort of grey trousers... Uh, kept that lovely dual horn sort of uh, visor piece, which is excellent, and maybe changed his Nexo Knight's helmet into just a silver one, then maybe he'd look a bit more like a conventional knight, but just absolutely massive. And in that respect, he'd be very much like the mountain, uh, the character in Game of Thrones, if you've seen that. And I thought he could basically uh, basically be standing next to all the other knights and they'd all sort of be going, <laughs> don't want to fight him uh, because he's uh, twice the size. So anyway, he wasn't that expensive. He was uh, £2.50. And for the visor alone, that's pretty uh, <laughs> good value if you ask me because that's super cool. Uh, and well, if he improves one of those scenes, then brilliant. I mean, it's tempting to almost get some sort of silver modelling paint or something and just paint over these uh, shoulder pads. You can't get them all silver, unfortunately. I've checked the catalogue several times. But yeah, I'll have to see how he looks when I've sort of toned down some of the other sections of his body uh, to see if he'll fit in. But he's very cool. Very cool indeed. So I like him. Uh, next one. I wanted some more bikers for my biker gang. So this one is called Chew Toy. Goodness knows why, but he looks incredibly simple, <laughs> facially. Oh, okay, boss. Uh, and he's got sort of one horn coming out of his uh, Ninjago-style sort of uh, samurai helmet. This lovely breastplate uh, and the usual sort of legs for that. So I'm planning to get a few of these guys to make a sort of Mad Max uh, biker gang. Uh, and in that respect, he'll be absolutely perfect. So very good for that. And there should be another one. Here we go. This one is called Heavy Metal, in brackets, Faith. So I don't know if he has uh, sort of an alter ego or something like that, but this guy's got this lovely sort of, <laughs> well, I say lovely, spiky sort of face guard thing and shoulder pad and one of those hats, which I might change for my bike again, give him a funky helmet for riding a bike. But those two are, well, very scary looking, I think you'll agree, uh, and they came, well, from several sets, but they both share one set in common, which is 70653, Firstborn from 2018. Uh, there are four uh, sort of baddies in there, which is uh, kind of how I want my biker gang to look, all of them sort of milling around up to no good. Uh, and there's a very cool helicopter actually in that set. Uh, not so much the build itself, but the fact that it's uh, got really good details, actual blades for the sort of helicopter blades, uh, teeth or horns for that rear rotor. And is that a turkey? <laughs> a turkey body on the back of the uh, helicopter? I don't get why that's there. Is that sort of a turkey bomb or something? Uh, I've got no idea. You'll have to tell me. But uh, it's a very good comedy effect. Maybe <laughs> I should add a turkey to one of my helicopters and that'll make me get loads of questions next time I do a tour. <laughs> but uh, it'll be worth it. Cool. So there we've got two bikers. Yeah, I don't think I'll use that helmet, on, uh, that hat on him, but um, it does look quite cool. Uh, oh, yeah. Right, let me finish off the minifigures first. So we've got two uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle foot soldiers. All labelled very well. 
completely unnecessary. Oh, that's what he's been using his label maker for. These must be stickies <laughs> that came in that box. Anyway, so the normal one is just for my army building, and that's very uh, welcome. And then there's this one, which I don't remember from any of the cartoons or films or anything, but it's this uh, sort of four-armed version that uses this second torso that kind of plugs into the regular torso uh, of a normal one. Uh, and this was only in one set, 79122. Shredder's Lair Rescue from 2014, which is the one with the incredibly valuable Shredder, kind of in purple. Uh, I've got the dark red one to lead my merry band, uh, and he's just as good in my opinion. He's still got a purple cloak. Oh no, it's dark blue, but whatever. Uh, and yeah, I'm happy with him. The other one's like 50 quid or something like that. So crazy. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why I'd want a four-armed one. I can obviously convert him into a normal one and then use this body part elsewhere. Uh, just seemed really interesting to me. So maybe we've just got one extra tall, four-armed guy. I suppose they are robots, aren't they? So you can make them with as many arms as you want, really. There aren't people in there. So, yeah, okay. Well, that's my first one of those, anyway. Oh, and look, I've got a third one. So I had one of each, and I've got two of one, and one of the bigger ones. Excellent. Army building galore. Uh, and then the last minifigure is this one from Power Miners, the second series. Uh, and I just bought him because he looked really interesting. So this character is called Rex. Uh, he's from the second wave, as I say, uh, from set 8188, Fire Blaster. Uh, and I think it's really a water blaster, maybe blasting fire, but um, yeah, uh, firing water to sort of put out the poor combustix, which is the name of the uh, sort of flamey sort of uh, rock monster there. And you can kind of see the visceral hatred of the rock monsters in Rex's face here. I don't, don't quite know what they've done wrong. I think they're quite cute. <laughs> what did they do to him to make him that angry and that determined to uh, extinguish them? Oh, and he's scared on the other side. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you mess with rock monsters. Anyway, uh, this guy was very cheap. He was only £1.50. And I really liked that visor. Uh, and even the helmet, I hadn't realised I had all this detail on the back. That looks really nice in this shiny metal colour. And he's got shiny metal sort of torso as well with this body armour front and back with the Power Miners logo on the chest. So, you know, he's almost uh, a mandatory buy. He does look, for obvious reasons, like one of those firefighters that has to go into somewhere really hot in one of those protective suits. But he'd need some sort of collar, wouldn't he? Otherwise he's going to get a very sunburnt neck. Uh, but yeah, for the price he was, I thought I'd get that. I'm not too interested in the second wave of Power Miners. And the first wave is what it's all about, in my opinion. But that is a very nice minifigure to add to the collection. And then the other part I was ooing over, though I didn't write this in my sort of description of why I was doing the order, but this was very important. This is the red horse armour. It's described in the catalog as a horse helmet. I mean, I suppose it technically is a horse helmet, but I just can't describe it as that. It's horse armour, in my opinion. But uh, anyway, it's got the neck sort of guard there and the nose guard and so on. Really nice piece, really nice angles and studs in incredibly good condition, it looks like. Very nice. And with a attachment there. Uh, and that is to go with what I got uh, the other time, uh, very recently, this red barding for a horse. This is the really old horse that looks very surprised. So his eye is going to look really weird through the uh, horse armor, I think, if it will fit. Does it fit this type of horse? Oh no. The gap in between the ears is not sufficient for this armor. So it must be that there's a change for later horses where the ears are slightly further apart. Oh, that's a shame for demonstrating it. But anyway, that will go on there <laughs> on a slightly different horse. Uh, yeah, you can't plan for everything. Uh, so this was part of the Gatehouse Raid set from 2013. That's set 70402, where this uh, uh, body armour, this barding came from as well. So now I do need the knight. Uh, and although it wasn't part of that set, I thought I might make use of the kind of hole on the nose to give this horse a horn. I could give it a unicorn horn. Uh, but I figure I'll give it this sort of spiky horn in red as well, so he'll look very mean. So you have to kind of align these up with the camera. Imagine that it looks something like that. Very good indeed. Very good indeed. I love that. Yeah, God, who knew that their ears moved between versions? Well, we all know now. So uh, I'll put that to one side because we didn't get that today, but I'll put that there. 
Ah, I think I've done most of the interesting pieces, but don't turn off because there are more to come. Oh, loads of jumper plates in dark tan. That is going to be for attaching all coral to and stuff like that, so I can get the spacing uh, onto the half stud as well, for under the sea. Uh, and then I fill my boots as usual with cheap pieces like cheese wedge bits and some old dark grey 1x2 bricks, looks like. There are two sticker bricks in here. Oh, these are the pulley wheels in old grey that I need to actually go on that catapult that I did as part of my um, train wagon. The old style Black Falcons uh, one, because I didn't have enough pulley wheels in the old grey. I've got a combination. I think it's. I think I've got old grey on one side and, and new light grey on the on the other side. So that will sort that out once and for all. I bought four in case the uh, seller got it wrong, because sometimes people mix up greys because they don't notice the differences like I do. Um, yeah, well, we can't all be pedants, can we? <laughs> so here's two nice stickers. This uh, 2x4 pizza one is from the uh, Heart Lake Pizzeria, set 41311 from 2017, where it's the sign on the very top there. Uh, and I just thought I might be able to stick it on the recent pizzeria for the um, uh, next to the jazz club, because the oven looks very much like the oven on the inside of that build. So I do quite like that. If not, maybe it's an advert somewhere, or I was going to do my own pizzeria. Uh, probably still will. So there we go. And this is a nice two by two with a balloon on going over the mountains. Uh, and this represents a magazine in the Heart Lake Hair Salon, set 41093 from 2015. Well, there's a few different sort of magazines, fashion magazines and so on, to read while you're waiting for your hair to get done. And I thought that would look very much like a travel brochure. So, you know, I could put it in my mall in the travel agent there. Obviously, we'll never see it again unless we lift off all the lids of that. But uh, it's still a very nice piece. So, yeah, I like that. Only pennies. What else have we got? We've got lots of old grey and new light grey uh, pieces. These are some inverted slopes. I used all the ones I had of this big sort of style uh, on the cave for the mer people recently. So there's some more. That'll be good. One more section for my... A pipeline that's coming down from the uh, oil rig in my uh, cabinet. I think I needed these for some jet engines. Can't remember what they were for. Oh, yeah, I've just remembered, so I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, mm, don't know why this is in a separate bag, but thank you very much. There's one of those. And four of these. These all look like old grey. Some of them are in slightly sort of worse condition than the others. But in this case, I don't really care because the fact that that one looks sun damaged on the left, for example, is probably a good thing for nice variation of colour in my city. So, yeah, oh, rather in my cabinet. So I really don't mind that at all. In fact, I applaud it. So, yeah, very good indeed. Moving on. Let's tip this one over here. We've got lots of wedge plates, I suppose you call them. In dark tan, just to give loads more texture for the undersea. I can sort of layer those. Because I figure with the coral layer, it's going to be really hard to get everything mounted so it doesn't knock over its neighbours. But if you can just do something like that and make three different heights very quickly and sort of put one coral there, one coral there, one coral there, all of the same type, then they kind of look more natural straight away. So, I mean, it's going to take an absolute age to build that layer. I can't say I'm looking forward to it in some respects, but in another respect, uh, it's going to be the most exciting thing I've done. So, yeah, more jump plates, one by twos this time. Oh, these were more parts for that uh, uh, jazz club sign that I don't need anymore, but won't go to waste. Some white jumper plates, can't remember. These lime ones are going to be using under the sea. Modified bricks with a four studs on the side just to make a nice sort of tower in the middle so you can just attach, I don't know, flipper pieces or goodness knows what to them and make a nice sort of tall stack or several little ones. Who knows? Ah, now this is relatively interesting. Not the uh, modified plates, they're relatively dull, but these white helmets. So again, for this big joust scene that I'm planning to be on the outside of my castle when I finally sort of get that displayed. I want to have loads of different sigils of uh, sort of uh, knights and groups of knights uh, from different sort of parts of the world, so to speak. Uh, and to make them all look a bit different, then I want them all to be sort of, well, dressed very differently. So I'm looking at all the classic knights sort of sets, you know, dragon knights and so on. 
but also other pieces that are more recent. Uh, and giving one set white helmets, maybe these ones for the foot soldiers and this one for the lord of the uh, manor, so to speak, uh, will make them look very different indeed. Uh, and a lot of them coloured ones come from uh, Nexodite sets, but this one doesn't. It actually comes from a chess set. Uh, 76392, the Hogwarts chess set from 2021. Because uh, who can forget the scene from the films, of course, when Hagrid is playing Ginny Weasley at chess uh, and is advised, I suggest Ginny to let the Wookiee win. Oh, yeah, everyone can remember that scene. Classic, because you do not want to have both your arms ripped off uh, by Hagrid the Wookiee. So, yeah, great scene, great helmets. Very looking forward to adding those to the pile. I'm going to have to start to. Uh, having a little box that I accumulate all of my castle pieces in because we're getting more and more now. Uh, then we've got more cheese wedge pieces in sand colour. I do plan to put loads of these all over the current layer we're doing just to make it more bobbly. It's a bit too flat at the moment. That's just uh, to fill in once I've got all the bigger pieces in. I think I've overbought these bright light blue flower pieces that I need for my mall. I think I've got them all now. So those ones were probably belt and braces. Then we've got some more wedge plates in dark tan, but a lot smaller, so they'll fit in between. That's very good. And four eggs in this medium lavender colour, and these are for corals as well, as you probably imagine. Uh, they were sort of Easter eggs uh, as part of two sets, including 40449, Easter Bunny's Carrot House, <laughs> which is quite a cute set, actually. Quite like that. Uh, carrot house it really does look quite like a carrot half out of the ground uh, anyway these were part of the flowers in that set and that's similar use to how I'll have them I'm sure and they've even got a pinhole in a top for adding a sort of fish swimming nearby or something like that that's very good um oh golly there's more pieces of the same I think here we go Ooh. so we have got more jumper plates oh I suppose those are two by two in tan Random black brick. I think I stole that from something else when I was building something recently. Uh, dark tan, uh, dark tan, old dark grey plates, cheese wedge pieces. I don't know where they're split up with the other ones. I don't care. I'll put them all together. More one by two jumper plates in dark tan. That should be loads now. A couple more of those flower pieces. Slopes in old dark grey. Lovely. And some in, is that old light grey? Could be. Yep. Good. More of those. Too many bags, but hey-ho. Oh, there's an interesting piece. I'll hook that out. Oh, and I'll hook those out as well. And there's something else in the bag there. Oh, yeah, hook that out. And another one. Hook that out. This looks like, oh, and hook that out. Old grey plates, blue plates, which are also replacing something I had to steal from something, as are these uh, tall bricks. When I build things and I haven't got all the pieces, it sometimes gets very frustrating. And I have to go to an existing build in my city, or maybe just something that I've got to one side or yet to make an appearance. And basically I steal the pieces and then make a note of what I stole so I can replace them. Otherwise you'll get to it and it'll be like Swiss cheese. <laughs> a few aerials in clear just so I can support some fish in my cabinet up in the air so they're very useful uh, and then all the interesting bits I fished out so this is a dish piece which is unique to one set with all these electric sort of I don't know what do you call that uh, bolts coming out sort of fizzing electronics uh, and this was in another uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles set 79105 Baxter Robot Rampage from 2013 which I haven't really seen before which is a very cool uh, Microlite build that sort of aircraft thing that's a Microlite I think um, and this piece is on Baxter's kind of gun missile arm kind of fires as a haywire missile to sort of uh, disrupt something electronically presumably uh, but yeah I've just never seen that piece before I've got no idea where to use it so ideas for that if you can think of one uh, but yeah, it could be a weapon for the super secret police. Yeah, who knows? Looks right up their street, I must say. Could use it as a jellyfish as well. But I've got quite a few pieces like that for a jellyfish. Uh, then we've got this 2x2. Two two, which has got two cars with sort of arrows on them. And I think this is in the rear-facing camera on the inside 
of the Porsche 911 RSR, set 42096 from 2019, uh, and I thought it would be absolutely perfect for uh, an arcade game screen, so that's why I got it. Whenever I see anything arcade gamey, I buy it. Eventually, I'm going to have about 30 arcade machines, I think. <laughs> Probably far too many, uh, but I just can't help myself. I just think that looks so much like so many games that we've all played. So, yeah, I like that. Put that over here with the lovely tiles. A two by four with records on it. Like it. So, obviously, I was thinking maybe my vinyl store for that, even though it's done, uh, with the sort of glitter on that. Uh, not glitter, a sort of mirror on that um, graphical equaliser looks really good. Uh, but they use it on this set um, 41058 Heart Lake Shopping Mall uh, from 2014. It's kind of on the front of a DJ booth, which is not a bad idea. So I could even use it on the top of my mall as well for the DJ booth there with DJ Tiki or whatever I called him. Um, and that set, I must have bought all the stickers from it, you know, piecemeal, uh, one by one by now. But uh, yeah, it's a really nice one. I think you'll agree. So maybe it'll go on another DJ or something elsewhere in a city that we've yet to build. Could even go in the uh, Alien Cantina, couldn't it? If they've got a DJ who likes spinning the wheels. Uh, and talking of aliens and the Alien Cantina, I've got one of these game pieces of the UFO alien. I've got this one a long time ago before, but it's always nice to have more than one because they're really cool. Uh, now, it could be a toy at the fairground, of course, but I thought it could be a really mini alien that was in the Alien Cantina, because not all aliens are the same size, uh, after all. And if you've watched the recent Mandalorian, you'll know one of the cool ones are the very little mechanic people that kind of live in a little burrow. <laughs> They're very cool. So this could be a very small alien of a very different kind. Uh, so he came in 3846 UFO Attack, uh, which was a game from 2010, uh, and he was quite reasonably priced. So yeah, I thought I'll get him uh, and put him in my bag of aliens, which is quite big actually, because I've got all the space police ones uh, in there. And then last, but definitely not least, are these wonderful banners. Oh, ho, 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 ho. clearly this guy did have that set, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one, the Shredder's Lair Rescue 79122 that we looked at earlier. Uh, probably kept the very expensive shredder for himself and then parted out the rest into his Bricklink store. Uh, so I got the other minifigures, which is great, and these two banners, which have got a bit of bubbling underneath. I should be able to fix them out using my patented hot tea technique. Uh, but then they'll be perfect. And they're on dark blue banner pieces rather than purple. Presumably you can't get purple ones, but if you can, I might look out for them and move them at the same time. Uh, but these are the foot logo, which is, well, not on these, I don't think, but it is their logo, effectively. Uh, I don't know why they're called the foot. I suppose it's something to do with martial arts and getting kicked in the face or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, if you can have loads of these guys walking around behind this guy, then Clearly, you need a pair of these banners, uh, you know, announcing his arrival. So they are vital. Uh, and I'm glad I can knock them off my list now. So, yeah, we'll put those there. And that is my Bricklink haul. So I think that was really successful. Uh, we've got lots of pieces that we need for the next layer, sort of thinking ahead. But the reason why we did it was for the horse head, which I have to get a replacement black horse. The lovely Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles army building. Uh, Axel in all his wonderfully huge, uh, powerful size. Uh, two more bikers uh, and, well, a rogue power miner. But the star of the day, 100%, is my Robin Hood Bricks Brickheads, which if you can email me the file for the uh, instructions, I'm going to make publicly available somehow. Uh, definitely to Patreon members is very easy. Uh, otherwise, you might just email me for a copy or something like that. But um, yeah, because I don't have a website, won't have time to do that as well. But this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to show Mrs. Hood this in a minute. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Andy and Helen. I'm really touched, believe me. Oh, so what an awesome haul. Even better than I thought it was going to be. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> So that only leaves me to say thank you so much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. 
And uh, if you want to send something to a future Brit call like Andy and Helen did, it doesn't have to be as wonderfully creative as this one, but um, <laughs> well, they've really put in the effort, haven't they? A grade for effort. Um, then you can to the usual address. Uh, otherwise, we'll be back to building uh, more stuff around the city and in the underwater cabinet on Friday and Monday, hopefully, if I've got enough time. Got a bit of work to do this week, so uh, yeah, uh, might be shorter than usual, but uh, I'm sure whatever we get up to, it'll be awesome fun. So until then, see you. Yeah, you're coming out to see Mrs. Hood. <laughs>